Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. I have some news that may be surprising to some of our longtime viewers, which is that Ava likes garlic. The first reaction, shock. Shock because... Uh, Did, man, what? This is garlic? Garlic. But also in, in your mouth, it, you keep the, the flavor of ju just of the garlic. It's got a real garlicky thing going on, doesn't it? See, because you don't understand, we don't use so much garlic as you think. The garlic taste is... Ugh. Did you put garlic? Yeah, I did put garlic in. Ah, yo, it's garlicky. There might be some garlic in there. Mapper, yes, it's not a surprise. I do love garlic. Everyone knows that I love garlic. Shock. My only problem here is the quantity and the way in which you use garlic. It's not garlic by itself. Okay, so tell you what, why don't you teach me and our audience, because I think we're both confused, how Italians use garlic. I'm here for this today, don't worry. Well, I'm excited to learn, but first, a very quick word from today's video sponsor. Honey is a free online shopping tool that scours the internet for coupons to find you the best deal on things you're already buying anyway. It works on a ton of your favorite websites, and the average Honey coupon saves you 18%. You might be thinking, Harper, is this an insanely difficult thing to install on my computer? No, it couldn't be easier. Ava, are you a very computer savvy person? Absolutely not. <laughs> Did you have any trouble installing Honey? No, it was so easy. The best part of Honey is that it just works automatically. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. Honey just searches for the best coupon, automatically applies it to your cart. You just do the normal shopping you're doing and you can trust that Honey is finding the best deal for you. As I said, it's completely free, so there's no risk to you. Get Honey and join the millions who are saving already. Visit joinhoney.com slash pastagrammar and thank you to Honey for sponsoring today's video. Right off the bat, Ava, can you clear something up for me? Is garlic bread Italian? No, <laughs> no. Garlic bread, as you know here, it has nothing to do with our version of garlic bread. But you have a version. Uh, let's say that we have bread and garlic together uh, that uh, reminds maybe the taste, but it's not the same thing of the American version. Can you show me? Yes, sure. What we are going to do now is our uh, bruschetta, not bruschetta, but uh, Italian bruschetta. And what we are going to do is roast uh, these two slices of bread. Uh, as you can see, I put them on my nonstick pan. Now that uh, our bruschetta is ready, we take our glove of garlic, fresh garlic, and what we do is this. That's our garlic bread. <laughs> I can see why this uh, garlic bread, you don't really consider garlic bread. So this is our uh, bruschetta. Now today we choose to do it with uh, tomatoes, but you can just do it with some uh, olive oil, uh, some uh, black pepper, a pinch of salt. Uh, one that I really like is with mozzarella and anchovies. So feel free to make your bruschetta as you want. I, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm skeptical that I'm even going to taste the garlic on this. Try it, Harper, try okay. it. Okay, okay. Bon appetito. Bon appetito. Oh, yeah, no. 
I taste the garlic, but definitely just a hint. It's like, it's no more an ingredient to this than the oregano, you know? It's just a light, light flavoring. That hint of garlic that makes the bruschetta a little bit better. But you don't taste just the garlic. Yeah. You taste the bread, the tomatoes, the olive oil, the oregano, and the garlic. And it's delicious, I know. So good. The garlic doesn't overpower at all the more delicate flavors of the tomato, of the olive oil. It's the right amount. Mm. Mm. He likes the bruschetta. It's the right amount of something. It's not the right amount of bruschetta. I could eat like way more. <laughs> Okay, well, you've cleared that up for me about uh, garlic bread, uh, but what about when you use garlic in pasta dishes? Okay, now, Harper, uh, pasta is a big word for us, so let's be clear. We have several pasta dishes that doesn't require garlic. Mm -hmm. Think about carbonara, think about matriciana, think about also the risotto is our first course and doesn't use garlic. But when we use garlic uh, with a pasta dish, uh, we use garlic in the proper way. And now I'm going to show you how we use garlic. What we are going to do now is pasta la puttanesca. The word puttana in Italian means uh, prostitute. And this dish is called puttanesca because it was a dish prepared for the prostitute when uh, they worked in the in their um... brothel. Huh? Brothel. Brothel. <laughs> when they worked in their brothel. For this recipe, I'm going to use one clove of garlic with all its skin. I want to give to my pasta a hint of garlic, but I don't want that his taste can cover all the rest. What we are going to do is crush this and put with all the skin right in the olive oil. to leave our garlic in our olive oil one minute maximum two minimum two minutes and pay attention to not burn the garlic and then we are going to remove it because uh, our olive oil uh, it took all the flavor of the garlic but we don't, don't need the garlic in our sauce <music> Pasta alla puttanesca. This is actually one of my favorite pasta dishes. You've made it for me before. I'm really excited to have it again, but I've never really paid very much attention to the garlic. We just, as you saw, we just used one clove of garlic. We crushed it, we put in the warm olive oil, and then we remove because we want to give a little bit of taste of garlic to this pasta dish, but not a lot, because uh, here we need to also taste the anchovies mm -hmm. and the tomatoes, capers, olives, not just garlic. 
I see you do that technique with a lot of dishes, so it seems like a pretty common technique. Usually, yes, we put with the skin and then we remove, as we said before, just to give an hint. Bon appetito. Bon appetito. It's been too long since you made this for me. I know. It's a very good dish of pasta. It is. I, I definitely can taste the garlic, but it's, it's just a hint and it blends in beautifully with the other ingredients. There is the perfect balance with all the ingredients. On a similar note, I should say, if there's anyone out there like me who is revolted by the idea of anchovies, don't be turned off by this dish. Ava tricked me the first time she made this for me, didn't tell me there were anchovies in it, and I had no idea. It's not that you can't taste them, it, they're there, they're important, but it, it doesn't have that strong fishy taste that you might expect. Fishy. Mm, it's fish sharper. <laughs> well, it's similar to the garlic. It's like, it's a hint of that flavor, but yes, it's not, not, not overpowering of that, yeah. So I can see how there are a lot of dishes. I've seen you make a ton of them like this, where you just have a little bit of garlic flavor. But what about a dish where you keep the garlic in the dish? Alper, we do have uh, dishes of pasta, pasta dishes where you keep the garlic, but also for them uh, we use a special trick. Is it a trick you're willing to share with the world? Yes, I'd love to share my knowledge. What we are going to cook now is a typical pasta dish from Tuscany, and the name is Pici all'aglione. Aglione is the typical garlic from Tuscany. We don't have, so we are going to use the normal garlic. And peachy is a, a typical fresh pasta from Tuscany that uh, they seem like spaghetti, but a little bit uh, thicker. Quite a bit of garlic for you, Ava. Yes, Arper, I know, but now I'm going to show you how to make uh, garlic taste a little less garlicky. Okay, now we have this giant glove of garlic. What we are going to do is uh, cut this in an half, and as you can see inside. The there is this part that it's a sort of uh, the jam, the jam of garlic. Jam? Jam, not jam like marmalade, Arper. Jam like the trees uh, when they have the germoglio. How do you say in English germoglio? Bud. Bud. It's not jam. It's not jam. Anyway, you understand. <laughs> you understand. So what we are going to do is uh, remove this. Because you know what? The strong taste of garlic is here. pretty impressed with Ava's method because I can smell the garlic. It's definitely garlicky, but it's not nearly as pungent as it would be if you normally use that amount of garlic.
already very impressed with your method because I've used a similar amount of garlic in dishes in the past. And when I would fry the garlic like that, the whole house would smell like garlic for a week. And in here, I wish you guys could smell it. It smells absolutely amazing. It still smells like garlic, but in a very mellow, delicious way. And it, you can also still smell the, the tomato and the wine and everything. I'm already sold. I'm, I'm already <laughs> impressed. What is this dish called again? As we said before, uh, these are pici alla lione. It's a fresh pasta typical from uh, Tuscany, from Val di Chiana. Well, I know it smells good. Let's see how it tastes. Please. Clearly my pasta fork skills are not adapted to this kind of thick no, pasta. No, it's like, yes, it's uh, <laughs> the, the pici are pici, so it's like, don't worry, it's like, you can. <laughs> bon appetito. Bon appetito. Yep, it tastes just <laughs> as good as it smells. I it's al- delicious. I always forget how good they are. It's <laughs> definitely it's definitely garlicky, much more so than than the puttanesca. You know, garlic is more heavily featured, but again, it's just a very a very mellow, yeah. sweet version of that. Okay, another thing. I was expecting to learn something about garlic today. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting to be introduced to like one of the coolest and most awesome pasta shapes ever. It's amazing. It's a thicker uh, spaghetto, fresh. And so it's a it's... fresh pasta that doesn't use egg. No, it's just uh, semolina flour, water, and a spoon. It depends on the quantity, but olive oil, that's all. It's so cool. So you use like four or five cloves of garlic. That's quite a lot of garlic for an Italian dish, right? Uh, See, si, but it's pretty rare that we have a pasta dish with so much garlic. Is this like the most garlic you would ever put in a dish? And no other. We have the king or the queen of garlic dish. So in other words, you might have a dish to satisfy our numerous viewers who say that they love garlic. Absolutely, yes. What the heck is this? This is uh, bagna cauda. And it's uh, a typical dish from uh, Piedmont. And actually, this dish uh, is part of UNESCO heritage. And it's a uh, sauce, let's say a sauce. Like where a dip. A dip, perfect. It's a dip where we are going to dip our uh, veggies. I need to okay. apologize with my friend from Piedmont because here I couldn't find the right anchovies to do it. So I had to substitute with uh, the regular anchovies under oil. But you How sh- dare you? Usually <laughs> they use the anchovies under salt. I love this so much because to any American, this assortment of like you know, dipping vegetables is so familiar. And then there's just the absolute weirdest, craziest dip I've ever seen in my life. Okay, there's a lot of garlic in there and a lot of anchovies. (laughs) Si, si, but it's delicious. Okay, (laughs) okay, let's try it. I'm going for a carrot. Bon appetito. appetito. It's not nearly as strong tasting as I was expecting. 
I thought this would be an absolute mouthful of very no. harsh flavors. No, that's pretty good. Wow. It's strange as all this amount of garlic, all this amount of anchovies create something that it's perfect, balanced. I can't quite describe it. It's like... It's delicate. <laughs> it has a delicate flavor. It's kind of, I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously mostly olive oil, but with like a really deep kind of umami flavor. I like this. Umami flavor. Umami flavor. Franz from Piedmont, do you like it, my umami flavor? Oh, it's also awesome when you spill it all over your pants. It's really good. <laughs> you can eat this and never stop. It's really awesome. What, is, what does the name mean, banya cauda? Banya means dip, cauda means hot. Hot dip. It makes, makes sense. Makes sense. I would have called it banya alio pesce. <laughs> alio pesce. <laughs> you know what? what? If you have leftovers, you can make pasta. With banya cauda? With banya cauda. See, si, it's delicious. I know we've had uh, two pasta dishes today, but you want to sign off and make some more pasta? <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> we'll be back next week. Well guys, we hope you learned something today about how Italians tend to use garlic. And uh, all of the recipes will be in links in the video description down below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at Pastagrammer. And I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't know. Uh, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao.